So following the bag topic, we are getting into the iterators. And the iterators, I like to, before I going into it, I like to think of iterators are these, these are very, 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 very simple objects. And these very simple objects are designed to do one thing, to iterate over a collection. Iterate means like, I don't even know what a good definition for iterate is, but like move over everything in there. Like if it's an array, I want to put my finger on each thing in the array. Start at the beginning, go to the next, go to the next, go to the next, go to the next, go to the next. Can you go backwards? No. You only go forward. You only go one direction. That's the rule. Uh, count. Count. What do you mean count? Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the... The iterators, very, very simple little objects. Iterate equals count. No, it is kind of like a linear search, but you would use an iterator to help you do a linear search. Traverse is a good word. Yeah, but I think, I don't know where, I'm not thinking of iterator necessarily just in the context of programming. I'm thinking of like iterate, just general English, but whatever, not that important right now. I like the traverse some container. So if it's an array, you start at the beginning, go to the next, go to the next, go to the next, go to the next. If you start at the beginning of a link structure, okay, you start at the beginning, then you go to the next, then you go to the next, then you go to the next. That, that's all an iterator is. It's a very simple one. Very simple object. And yeah, when you go over the things that come to my mind, like to reiterate is to go over something again. Yeah, go over is a good way to put it, I'd say. Yeah. Um, and Ash... You iterate over a collection when doing a linear search, right? So the linear search, I mean, a big part of it is the iterating, but then you're always checking each, each thing you're looking at, like, is it what I'm looking for? Is it what I'm looking for? And so on and so on. So iterators. We often, uh, we need access to every element in some thing, like an array, stack, queue, bag, whatever. And we call this iterating over the things. And we've done this countless times already with arrays. They look something like this. I zero, length of the array, I plus plus, plus plus I, uh, sum array at index I. So just basically go through for each I uh, and yeah, access it. However, not everything we may want to iterate over is an array, right? And trying to use a for loop on a link structure won't work quite as nicely, right? I mean, we can, if I know how long the link structure is, I can, I can put it in a for loop with an I, great. But a really nice way to iterate over a, a linked collection is just always check like, is the current nodes next not null? Or is the current node not null? Or always just checking if nodes aren't null. Uh, I think, yeah, this is a bug. This should be like, if current node get is not null. This is a bug, someone can make this a PR. Uh, this is this is wrong. This should be if current node's not null. Not if it's next isn't null. Because what do I care if it's next isn't null when I'm just getting the data from current? Yeah, this is a bug. Someone should remove this and get an awesome contribution to the GitHub. Um, <clears throat> okay, so yeah, we like to iterate over arrays like this typically, and a lot of times we like to iterate over link structures like this with a while loop. But Java provides us with a common uniform way to iterate over something. Whether it's got an array, a link structure, whatever, it gives us a common way to iterate. It gives us a common loop structure. And it's also independent of what we're iterating over. What should be in the while, just, just while like current node is not null. Not like the dot get next here is a mistake. That, that part shouldn't be here. Um, yeah, so iterators are objects that allow us to iterate over a collection one element at a time. Get each element in an array, get all the elements from a bag, and there are two important interfaces that we talk about when dealing with iterators. One is iterator, and the other is iterable. An iterator is the little object the little robot that goes and iterates over the collection. So that is the interface to describe the little robot that's going to iterate. Something that's iterable would be something we want to iterate over, like the bag, right? So an iterator that iterates over a bag 
is an iterator, but the bag itself is iterable. <laughs> Don't break your brain trying to memorize these two. You, you'll, it's pretty obvious once you start using it. Um, iterator objects are typically very simple. To define our own iterator, we need to make it implement iterator. All right, and it uses the iterator interface. And if there's a link here to it on the Oracle website. And iterators are really simple. The methods that you have are really the ones that we're only gonna really care about are has, next, and next. That's it. There are other ones, remove and uh, for each remaining, but we don't really care about those a lot of times. What were they? What were what? The methods. What? These, these ones, the, the next and has next are the important ones. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and yeah. And there are two abstract methods, including the interface, which we'll focus on. Next and has next, right here. So next retrieves the next element, which is always kind of like, I remember when I first learned this, it always kind of threw me off because next is actually like the current one, but just bear with me. And has next is a, a function that just, or a method that just tells us if there is another thing. So in the end, we, uh, if we use an iterator, we do not care what the underlying container is, no matter what it is. We get each element with next and check if, it's, uh, if there are more elements with has next. For example, here's an example. For example, here's an example. Ooh, here's another thing that could get fixed as a PR. For example, using it like the reusing example here, that's no good. Someone can fix that. Uh, for example, here's an example of using an iterator to iterate over an arbitrary iterable thing of type T. I get an iterator for that thing, arbitrary iterable thing, uh, dot iterator. I retrieve the iterator. This is assuming, of course, that there is an iterator method for this arbitrary iterable thing. And if I go, no, not that, not that. Here we go. Uh, which one should we look at here? Linked or array sorted bag, right? Oh, these are the tests. What am I doing looking at the tests here? Array sorted bag. If we scroll down, see, we've got the iterator here, right? So this is a method we, we will often write, right? The iterator method that returns some iterator. Now for the iterator here in the bag, it's an array iterator because the, it's an array sorted bag, but it, it doesn't really matter because it's an iterator. So back to what it's saying here. So we get the iterator and we make a reference variable to an iterator of type T called IT. This is like a convention, it for iterator. And then this is the common structure of the loop. While it has next, iterator next. That's it. It doesn't matter if this is an array iterator, a linked iterator, or a who knows what iterator. If it has a has next that gives me true if there's another thing, and next gives me the next thing, then I'm happy. But it doesn't really matter what the underlying container is. This code right here will be the same, which is pretty cool. Uh, I just wanna make sure, do I have an example of iterable? Yes. All right, cool. We'll get to that in a moment. Okay, uh, da, da, da. okay. an array iterator. So we made uh, an array indexed bag and an array sorted bag. So let's start making an iterator that's an array iterator because we've got array collections we wanna iterate over. We obviously already made linked uh, queues and linked uh, stacks and there's nothing stopping us from making a linked bag, right? So we could have a linked iterator as well, but for now we'll just talk about the array iterator. And if you click this, you'll download the array iterator, which let's just go and have a look. Uh, 
Let's go have a look at what that is. Array iterator. Okay. It's a small class. And what do we have? Okay, public class array iterator of type T, it's implementing iterator. Great. The class has three fields. Not all the iterators will necessarily need these three fields. It doesn't really matter. Uh, linked iterators probably won't have three fields like this, but the array iterator will because we need them and you'll see how we're using them. So we've got three fields, the size, current index, and the items, the array of items of type T. So an array iterator collection or constructor, it takes the items we want to iterate over and the size, the number of things in this array. Remember, the capacity of the array and the size of the collection are not the same. I could have an array of size 100 with only seven things in it that I care about. So <clears throat> I say items is items, size is size, and current index will be zero. That's the current index the iterator is on. So the little robot starts at index zero. That's how I've got this set up. You could, by the way, I'll say this now, you could write an iterator that starts at the end and goes all the way to the beginning. There's nothing stopping you from doing that, but we're going to go with this more normal one at this stage of just starting at the beginning and going to the end. So, has next is a very simple method. Is the current index less than size? If it is, then there's something that exists that I can get. As soon as current index equals size, because remember size is always like the next available spot, if it's ever equal to size or greater than size, well, there's nothing there to get. So that would return false. So as long as the current index is less than size, there's something in there. Did I hear a boop? No. And then next. Well, if I ask for a next when it doesn't have a next, basically, has if, if I get, if I ask for the next, I'm going to check that it does in fact have a next. If it doesn't, we're going to throw an exception, no such element exception. Otherwise, we get the element, return element, by getting items at the current index. Then we increment the current index, return element. So after I call next once, what will current index be? That's a quiz for you. I call the next method one time. What will current index be? Remember, current index is a class field here. There's, this isn't a trick question. This should be really easy. And yes, I use the word easy, not simple. The crickets is very concerning to me. I call next once. Current index starts at zero. I call next once. One. One person put one multiple times. Okay. Yeah. So then next time I call next, what's current index? Well, it's one. So I get the item from items at index one and then current index becomes two. Do it again, do it again, do it again and so on. So this is, it's a very simple little object that's just designed to keep track of where it is over a collection and then repeatedly return indiv each individual thing. That's all. If you want to make your iterator count by twos, array count by two iterator, great. You can do something like plus equals, and this will return every other element. Why would we want this? I don't know. Maybe there's a reason you want to start at the beginning and skip every other one. I don't know. But you could do that. I'm not going to, but you could. Uh, how does return current index work? It has next. I think programming gave us trust issues. Okay, how does return current index less than size work in has next? Does, yeah, so has next returns true if there is a next. So not has next would be false if there is no, or not has next would be true if there is no next. So to get to Jameson's question, it's just imagine I have a, an array of size 100, but I've got eight things in that array. Current index is zero. Is zero less than eight? Yeah, okay, so there's something there. But remember, 
zero based indexing, we've got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So index seven, if current index is seven, and I ask is seven less than eight, that's true, has next is true. We increment one because we get the next again. So now current index is eight. If I say, hey, is eight, if I call has next, I ask is eight less than eight? Is current index less than the size? Is eight less than eight? No. Where's the exclamation point? Oh, you mean in here? Well, that's just saying if has next, like if there is no next, then we throw an exception. I, I'm trying to get something out of there that's not there. Does that mean if it doesn't, I'm not sure I understand your question. So that has next returns true if there's a next thing. So it'll return false if there isn't a next thing. And then if you not false, you get true. And then that means the if statement executes. So if this is just if not has next, then no such element exception. Did that answer your question? Otherwise I might not, otherwise I might not be sure what you're, okay, okay. Um, cool. And that's it. There's only these two methods. Okay, we've got our constructor, but only the two methods, has next and, and next. Has next just tells us if there's, a, if the current index is an index that has something, that, like there is something there. Um, let's have a quick look at what a linked iterator would look like. Just for fun. Uh, linked iterator. Okay. So linked iterator implements iterator. But this one only has one field, current. Interesting that I made these private and this one not, but whatever. This is another issue. Someone can go fix this as a PR and make this private like that. But whatever. That would be a good PR though. Better than a little typo. Um, so yeah, let's look at the linked iterators iterator. The one class field current. Uh, create the iterator. Well, what is the constructor? Well, just get the head of the collection and then current is the head. Okay, great. Has next. Well, this the has next here is really easy. Is current not null? If current's not null, then there's something there. Great. And then down here, the next is very similar to before. If, if there is no next, you throw an exception. Otherwise, you get the data from current, save it, Make current equal to current's next, and then return the element. And that's it. They're very simple objects. We want them to be nice, simple objects. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so, okay. The fields, size, the current index reference. Yeah, we already went over. The easy way to know if there's anything left in the collection to iterate over to see if the current index is less than the number of things in the collection. Right. Uh, then the next, the way it's written, if we try to access the next thing when there is no more things, we throw an exception. Yeah. Otherwise, update the current index and return the element. Important things to note here. This iterator can only go in one direction. Once the iterator object gets to the end of the collection, that's it. It's done. It has served its purpose. You can't reset it. If you have an iterator and you start at the beginning and you go to the end and you say, but I want that iterator to go back to the beginning because I want to iterate again. You can't. What you can do, however, is just make a new iterator object. So you, you have an iterator, you made it go to the end, then you just make a new iterator that starts at the beginning. Because they, they serve one purpose, and that's all they do. If we, went out or if, yeah, if we want to iterate over the collection again, we create a new iterator. Note, although in this example our iterator goes in our defined direction, there's nothing stopping us from creating an iterator that goes in the reverse direction. Note, generally, we need to be careful about modifying the collection when using an iterator. For example, with the array iterator, the iterator has reference to the array that is being used and referenced in the thing that we want to iterate over, so like the bag. If we, mod if we were to modify something with our iterator, it would impact the thing we are iterating over. What this note is saying is, if I have my array iterator, where'd it go? Array iterator. And in here I said something like, oh, uh, item 
at current index equals 99 or I don't know null there that's that's better uh, this would be really bad because the iterator has access to the array and the iterator here is now modifying the array but we do not want our iterators to do anything like that all the iterator does is like the iterator is like intended to be like read only you can read from the collection by iterating over it but we don't want the iterator itself to be making any modification. Now, the iterator, you'll notice that the iterator will return something of type T. So here, the iterator will return a reference to the thing. So if you, the programmer who got the next from the iterator, wants to make modifications, fine. But the iterator itself should not modify anything within the collection it's iterating over. Warning. Uh, it's like... Is it like a pointer? No, it, it's it's it straight up is. I mean, it's a reference variable. Yeah, it's it's a pointer. Though. It's because when it gets, it's because right here, here array sorted bag. When I call the when I make an iterator in array sorted bag, I give it the bag and the rear. The bag is the array. So when I pass it and now reference it by something called items, it's an alias. We now have two references to the exact same object. They both point to the same one single array that exists. Whoop, I, I hit something there. Uh, <clears throat> not James. No, you're not confusing yourself. You're right, it, was like a, it is like a pointer. Doesn't a for loop iterate over stuff? Yes, but it doesn't give us a uniform way of iterating over some collection regardless of what its underlying thing is. Let me put it this way. If I say iterate over a bag, I gave you a bag, right? You're in your main and I say, okay, make a bag of type integer. My bag equals a new, uh, Array sorted bag. Was that a sorted bag? Yeah. And here I'll do sorted bag. Great. So I have a sorted bag here and I tell you, okay, that's a bag. Uh, iterate over it. How do you do that? Right? Because you don't have access to the array, right? And as far as I'm concerned, like Java doesn't even really care. Java cares that it's a sorted bag. This is an array sorted bag, sure. But if this was a linked one, I'd have to iterate over it differently. It's a whole thing. So yeah, with something like this, I can't really iterate over it really well. I mean, I can by doing something like for i uh, my bag dot size, and then I've got okay my bag dot get no. At first, last, remove, contains, is empty. No, I, I, there's, I don't really have a, a nice good way to iterate over this thing. So that's kind of lame, right? Like, that's no good. So you're saying, like, uh, yeah, a for loop can be used to iterate. Yeah, a for loop is great for iterating, iterating over an array. But what is my bag? My bag isn't an array. It's a sorted bag. Sure, I know the implementation under the hood is an array sorted bag, but I don't have access to that array because it's a private field. So the iterator, now if I say my bag, whoop, uh, no, iterator of integer, yeah, uh, it equals my bag dot iterator. Now with something like this, because I have access to the iterator from the bag, I can say for or while it has next, uh, it next. So this right here is a great little, uh, yes, is a great way to use that iterator, right? So now it doesn't matter if this is an array sorted bag, a linked sorted bag, I can iterate over this collection with an iterator with this right here. Create the iterator, and then ask if it has a next. If it does, get the next. Repeat, repeat, repeat until has next is false, and then the loop ends. 
and we're done. The iterating is over. And this style right here is it's agnostic to the underlying implementation. As far as I'm concerned, as the person writing the code in the main, I don't give a shit what that iterator is. All I care is it's an iterator. We know it's an array iterator because under the hood, if we go here, we can be like, oh, no, I clicked the wrong button. Well, I guess not even, right? So if we go here though, obviously we know it's an array iterator. We wrote it. But I don't care that it's an array iterator. I don't care if it's a linked iterator. I just care that it's an iterator and I can do, hey, you got a next? Great, give me the next. That's it. Uh, so hopefully, what would be some use cases for an iterator? Literally anytime you want to loop over anything. Why does the iterator need integer? Ah, oh, that's because it's a bag of type integers. So when I get next, the thing of the, the thing that it's returning is something of type T. That's why. So it matches this. Uh, when would we use case for an iterator? Literally anytime you want to uh, iterate over a collection. Uh, like for example, like if you look at this, this is the commented out get count, but we use that. Look, get the iterator. If it has next, get its next and check something with it. Here's another one. The two string is using this iterator as well because we want to loop over the thing. Uh, here's another one. Find insert index. Create the iterator. Well, it has next and it's next, whatever. You get the idea. When would we want these iterators? Anytime we iterate over the collection. We love iterators. But iterators get better with iterable. But we'll get there in a second. So linked iterator, it's the same idea. Uh, it's just has next is, is the current not null? We already looked at this. And then next is, okay, get the data, set current to the current's next, and then return the element. That's it. <laughs> Excuse me. So just like the array iterator, the, the iterator only goes in one direction. Uh, once we get an element with next, we can't go back unless we start a new iterator. Warning, if you made a node class, an internal class, then you need to make your linked iterator internal too. <laughs> FYI. That's not that important right now. Okay. So, obviously, this has all been within the context of, let me close some of these things. Uh, race sorted bag. Of saying like, well, hey, we wrote a method for our uh, our bag, for all the bags, really, all the bags have a have a method called iterator, that is returning an iterator of type T. So we want to implement these methods. The specific implementation of the of the uh, collection, like the array sorted bag, is going to return an array iterator. It makes a new array iterator and then immediately returns it. Great. And so the iterator method is returning an iterator, of, uh, an iterator of type T. This is perfect. If this was a linked sorted bag, I would write linked iterator. For fun, let's go to our array stack. Um, this is the array stack. There's no, uh, there is no iterator method in here. I'm going to add one. Okay, there is no override. Uh, this is not called, it's called stack. And this is top. There, boom. There. Uh, our stack now has an iterator. We can ask for an iterator from our stack and it returns an iterator to iterate over the stack. Great. That's all we needed. If here, now I want to go to a, a linked stack. I'm going to undo all these though. <laughs> linked stack. Okay, great. Let's make a, an iterator here. Okay, we want the iterator. It's not overriding anything. Uh, but we don't want an array iterator. We want a linked iterator. And what is this uh, front, top, top? Cannot infer argument type. Do I need to say T here? Str 
strange that it can't infer type here. Uh, I think it's mad because it's an internal uh, it's an internal clash, just like what that warning was about. But point being, that's how you would do it, is you write the iterator, except here you would return the linked iterator if it was a linked version of this collection. Uh, linked iterator, bag array iterator. Great. Cool. Cool. So, if we create a sorted bag with an array, our array sorted bag iterator method would need to return an array iterator. If we wanted a linked sorted bag, we would need to return linked iterator, like this, linked iterator with head. Uh, since both versions of the sorted bag return an iterator, and here, so here's the big point, is remember, if I'm here in my main, The specific implementation of the bag should not affect how I use sorted bags. I need to interact with the sorted bag the same way regardless of how it's implemented. How I interact with it, how the sorted bag does its thing is irrelevant to me. All I care about is that I can do everything that I should be able to do with a sorted bag regardless if it's a linked one, if it's a heap, if it's an array, if it's a X, Y, who cares, whatever. It, it's got to operate the same way. But now I can do that because if I told you it's some implementation of a sorted bag, but I'm not telling you if it's an array or linked, doesn't matter. This code is going to work just the same because I create an iterator. How? By doing this. This might be an array iterator. It might be a linked iterator. I don't care. All that matters is that I can say, hey, iterator, do you got an X? And if you do, great, give it to me. That's all. Now, okay, if it's array iterator there, we're good. I don't think I have a linked, a linked sorted bag in here. No, I do not. So, uh, yeah, but this iterator now gives us a uniform way to iterate over a collection regardless of what the underlying container is which is fantastic we love to have uniform ways to do things that are independent of the actual implementation details that is a good thing we like that in programming uh, okay since both versions yeah okay yep there we go in the end, what the implementation of sorted bag I have does not impact the ability to use an iterator. Great. Now, two strings. So here's an example of using an iterator for the two string within a sorted bag. So great. Public two string. Make a string builder. Iterator integer it. Uh, this iterator. That shouldn't be integer though. That should be t. Hold on. Yeah, here's another bug. Fix this. This should be T. Man, there's a lot of bugs today. Someone could be crushing it on the GitHub pushes or pull requests. This integer should not be an integer. It should be generic. It should be just a T. So string builder, create an iterator for the collection. That's why I'm saying this dot iterator. Call the iterator method from whatever this is. So this is like the uh, sorted bags iterator. Uh, IT has next. If it does, append its next comma space and then once you've done looping over that collection return builder dot two string great and the cool thing here now is the two string for an array sorted bag and a link sorted bag are now identical the code for these two strings will be identical if you use iterators which is awesome this is on purpose what is on purpose giving you all these opportunities to fix mistakes i'd love to say that's the case but it's not Someone better be fixing these. Think of, think of that free jumbo Snickers, okay? Uh, okay, just by looking at this, you can't tell me. Yeah, so this is, the, this is the beauty of this. Just by looking at this two string, you can't tell me if I'm using an array iterator or a linked iterator, can you? You have no idea, but that's kind of the point. 
I can now iterate over something. That's the what, that's what I want to do without needing to worry about how the iterator does its thing. Cause I don't care. I just care that I can iterate. That's all I care about. So that's what's really cool about this is now I don't even care what kind of iterator it is. I can use it for the collection the same way, regardless of what the underlying container is. That's cool. Yeah, it was always jumbo. Well, some, someone convinced me to sweeten the deal <laughs> by making it jumbo. So it's jumbo. So you better get on those pull requests and it'll be first come first serve. If someone's, if like five people submit the same pull request, whoever submitted first will get the, will get the PR merged. I said it's Snickers bar, then I changed it to jumbo Snickers. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now all of this that I just showed you, this is for anything that's iterable or sorry, this is for anything with iterators. Okay. But ideally, if you want your class to be using iterators, you're going to make Pardon me. You're going to make um, it implement the iter iterable. So the iterator interface is used for creating an iterator object to iterate over something. If we're making a class that we want to be able to iterate over, we will have that class implement iterable. So if we go up to array sorted bag all the way up to the top, we'll see it implements oh, sorted bag. Hold on. And there's which one implements bag? Is it her bag? Yes. So bags are extending iterable. Okay. And by extension through inheritance, that means in a, a sorted bag is iterable and array sorted bag is also iterable. <clears throat> so it's iterable. This does not say iterator. It says iterable. So all that means is if we click the iterable, the class needs to have here. Maybe I actually have a link in the course content. The iterable interface. Yes, if you click this, you will see the iterable interface. And the iterable interface has one very important method in it called iterator. There's something called splitterator too that's really cool that we are not getting into, but there's iterator. And as you can see, all of these um, objects implement the iterator method, meaning we are already uh, implementing iterator or uh, iterable by implementing iterator. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Uh, so you iterate your iterator so you can iterate your iterable. Yes, that's exactly correct. Your iterator iterates, uh, which allows you to iterate over your iterable thing. <laughs> So <laughs> I realize it's like, I'm getting, I'm getting a uh, tongue tied here. You were, <laughs> you were literally joking. Why didn't you say iterably joke? Why didn't you misspell literally with like iterably? I'm having a stroke. <laughs> okay. The point here is iterators are the little robots that put their finger on each thing. A collection is iterable. An array is iterable by using iterators to iterate over the array. The array itself is now iterable. So iterator is the thing that puts its finger on the things. Iterable, the, well, the collection is iterable. Okay. <laughs> now the magic of this is if we guarantee that this method exists, which it does if we go look at a race sorted bag, we can actually get away without even having to write our loop like this. We actually can eliminate the need for all of this and just say the following for T, I guess integer, cause it's integer, um, sum int colon, in my bag. And then some int will be effectively the, the, the next, right? So 
uh, some int. So now, because the collection itself is iterable, I can use this style of for loop for iterating over my collection. Which, okay, I get it. Sure, you're probably now saying, okay, but what's the big deal? Doing like creating an iterator object, it's not a lot of extra work. Yeah, sure, but I don't know. This is like beautiful, nice syntax here. For each integer called sum int from my bag, Print it out. The syntax is similar, sure, I get it. But if it's an iterable collection, which array sorted bag is, and again, if you go up here and you're like, hey, hold on, it's not, uh, it's not implementing iterable. It's implementing this like a sorted bag, and sorted bag isn't implement like it has nothing to do with iterable, but bag does. So bag is uh, extending um, <coughs> iterable. So by doing that, we can now iterate over our collection like so. You could already iterate over things like arrays this way. In fact, if I have, let me show you what IntelliJ would even be showing you. If I say uh, int array sum array equals a new array of size 10, let's say. Great. If I wrote a for loop like this, for i, i is less than, uh, I'll just hard code it as 10, because why not? S out, uh, sum array at index i. Great. Great. Contents, uh, but they're never written to. Well, whatever. Hmm. I'm actually going to hard code this array to be like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There. Oh, why is it not telling me? Okay, cool. I can go over this and it's gonna be like, hey, um, you could, oh, they, okay, so now it's getting extra fancy. Fine, I'm going to use an enhanced for loop by saying for uh, int i sum int colon sum array, great. This is valid code for an array because arrays implement iterable. If we go to the array class, I don't know where the array, where, I don't know where I'd find it. Arrays, maybe? Yeah, okay, I, was, I don't know where I'm going to find it, but whatever. Arrays are iterable, meaning we can, whoop, we can write our loops like this if we really wanted, which is neat. And we like loops like this. Why? Because we do. The syntax is so nice. It's nice. It's nice. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so any questions about that? So yeah, okay, the thing with the iterator, we can use enhanced for loops for each loops. Like in general, it looks like this. For type ref var colon iterable thing. An example, uh, so we can actually now do our two string without that iterator thing. We just say, okay, create an iterator for this object. So that calls the, like th th this is now, because this object's iterable, we can have the two string look like this, which if you actually go and look at all of these implementations, I'm using this, this style here with the bag element colon for this, where before I was doing it with uh, the iterator it, this dot iterator, but because it's iterable, I can get away with this even fancier version of a for loop. Cool. All right. Why is making an iterator something you even need to do? Like, it's is not already built into like is not well because some classes you don't need an iterator for right like for example the friend class why would i write it like well, there is no iterator for a friend right but if you were making a collection 
Well, collections we typically want to iterate over, so we write these iterators. But collections are only one type of class. I mean, think of assignment two or assignment three, where you've got a maze. You've got a maze solver, you've got a maze renderer, all those things. But none of those things need iterators, so I wouldn't include those because I don't need them. Is that what you were asking? And maybe I misunderstood the question. Uh, does dot length use an iterator? No, I don't believe so. But why we have never needed to make one till now? Because we got away without needing to do it. But now we've learned of a, of a way to make iterating over some collection a uniform way. We do it the exact same way regardless of what the underlying contents are. It could be a linked bag, it could be uh, an array bag, but the way I iterate over them becomes the same if I use the iterators. So if you know the type of collection and the length, you can use a regular for loop. Well, not necessarily because think of the stack, right? Think of the stack. Stack, Where's like an array stack. Right? I know the size by set, like, actually, no, I don't even, right? Because, uh, so, okay, I know the size because I can ask size of the stack. And I know it's an array underneath. But if I'm in my main, if I'm here and I say, uh, okay, uh, stack of type integer equals a new array stack. Great. Iterate over this. How? Okay, for i uh, my stack dot size. But what do I do? Do you want me to pop everything off and then immediately push it back on after? I mean, I could do that, but that's a lot of work just to iterate, right? So I, I mean, I could do something like okay, uh, temp temp stack and I can like pop each thing off uh, equals my stack dot pop uh, so temp and then uh, temp stack dot push temp and then immediately after I can do another for loop and I where I just put everything back on my stack by saying, okay, now my stack dot push temp stack dot pop. Here, great. Here's how I can iterate over my stack. That sucks, <laughs> right? No, you can't peek because the peek only tells you the first thing. So iterating is just looking iterating is iterating is just looking at each thing in the collection. I've got a whole stack. You can only add and remove, but why can't we look at everything there? And even then, let's say I did have a way to do it. The problem is if I had a way to do it. So let's say I had a nice clean way of indexing my stack at index i somehow, right? Because, oh, it, it'll magically work. Great, right? Because my stack is a, it's an array stack. So let's say, for example, this would magically work. It's not gonna, but let's say it would magically work. Great, uh, then if I do this, this existing code wouldn't make any sense because you can't index a linked thing like that, can you? So that's no good. So the iterator makes it so it's the same where I can have the code here be for integer. There is no iterator for my stack, so it won't work. It'll, it'll complain about like, hey, this doesn't exist. My stack, uh, my int, right? This will be the same whether it's a link stack or array stack. It'll be identical, which is awesome, which is what we want. Okay. Uh, for i in Python looking goaded right now. Um, for i in Python, 
is the for each loop, whether you like it or not. You've been using the for each loop in Python this whole time. What you were used to in Python is the thing I'm teaching you right now. Oh, and that's why you're saying, I know, I know. Uh, let's just look at everything. Yeah, don't, don't gotta write it though. You would if you, yeah, you, you, you are, you are, you are so wrong because look, I'm going to show you right now. I re if you, if you got to leave, leave, <laughs> but I'm going to show you because you're wrong and I got to show you that you're wrong. <laughs> so yeah, if you got to leave, leave the, the following is not on the test, but, uh, here is why you're wrong. I can come along and make a, uh, a bag, but I want one from Java. No. Okay. Let's, uh, array list of type integer. Okay. Oops. No, I don't want that to be an array list. So I want that to just be a list. What are they called? Import class list. Great. Array list, great. Now what's, what's it wrong? New. There, great. I've got an array list. <laughs> okay, if I'm assuming those that are here are interested. If I'm in Python, I would write something like this. Uh, right, and then for i in some list, print i, right? I could run this and we'll see zero, one, two, three, four, right? So this is like for each i in some list, for each thing in the collection of things, print it out, great. Uh, if I go here, I've got my array, my list here in Python. So this is using the built-in Java list. Um, I would now say, okay, my list, nope, for uh, integer in my list. Great. And this will work just fine. I mean, now it's saying like, well, it's, it's empty. So that's why it's kind of like whining, but this is fine. I didn't need to write any iterator or make anything iterable for this list. Neither did I here. But if you were coming along and you were implementing your own collection, like an array stack, you have to. Because someone, just because someone already wrote that for a list doesn't mean it exists for anything that they didn't write. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. So if you are making a class that you want to be iterable, you have to do the iterator. In Python, if you were making a class that you wanted to be iterable, like a stack, you'd have to write the iterator. And Python iter is something you would have to implement. The exact same thing exists in Python. It's called like underscore underscore iter, right? So anyways, rant over, but it would be the same. So if you're like, oh, I wish it was Python because it was easier. No, it's the same. It's just... <laughs> I'm glad you understand now. <laughs> the things you missed about Python aren't Python. The thing you missed about Python was Python is more English. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Um, the things you missed about Python were the, were like, oh, but it was nice, cushy, fun, safe world. The things you don't like about Java are like the data structures, but the data structures are similarly annoying in Python. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, any final questions? Thank you for listening to my rant. I'll stop recording now.